Guten Abend. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy to see you here at Klagomar TV. Climate and Evil Man was the headline of an article in the German newspaper Augsburger Allgemeine Zeitung on the 14th of January 2015. The retired micrometeorologist Professor Dr. Thomas Foken expressed his thesis that the climate change is partly man-made and man has to take responsibility. This being confirmed by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. In this broadcast, we are going to investigate whether this is true. As Dr. Fogen refers to the statements of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, it is prior to examine what the IPCC is and who the members are. Nigel Calder, a British science journalist, publicist and author, closely followed the historical origin and development of the IPCC. We quote, The IPCC is a purely political and non-scientific intergovernmental task force. It consists of bureaucrats and scientists, but they choose basically those who sing from the same song sheet. In 1988, the foundation task of the IPCC was to prove that we are headed towards a climate catastrophe and that man is to blame for the climate change. The climate results are therefore bound to occur. According to Nigel Calder, the IPCC is not striving for neutral scientific research, how it should be expected from such an important commission. Instead, the IPCC propagates that there definitely is a climate catastrophe and that it is man-made. But why does the IPCC act like this? In fact, the laws and restrictions related to the predicted climate catastrophe are of huge economic importance. Without the permanent propagating of the IPCC in cooperation with the media, many laws and taxes would not have been able to be established or raised. This is exactly where Professor Kirstein, geography lecturer at Leipzig University in Germany, sees the following connection. He regards the climate policy a policy of fear. For him, the CO2 debate has nothing to do with global warming, but only with financial motivations. According to his statement, fear is the engine of the campaign as it is carried out up to this day. Only through fear a new policy can develop, the professor says. Klagomar TV has followed more counter-voices on the thesis of an upcoming climate catastrophe. Listen to, respectively look at the following examples. In Oregon petition of 1998, about 31,000 experts, including 9,000 scientists with doctorate degrees in atmospheric physics, signed that there is no scientific proof for the climate being influenced by man. In the germ call Heidelberger Aufruf in 1992, 264 scientists signed, including 52 Nobel Prize winners, who understand themselves at the counter voice to the IPCC thesis. Today, this call has been signed by 4,000 people, 72 of them Nobel Prize winners. And what exactly do neutral scientists say about the CO2 amount in the atmosphere? The CO2 amount in the overall atmosphere is only 0.038%, of which only 4% is produced by man. That means the portion caused by man in the overall atmosphere worldwide is only 0.00152%. According to the advocates of the climate catastrophe, this vanishingly low percentage of CO2 must serve as the reason for the alleged greenhouse effect, which is global warming. Most neutral scientists don't think climate change is caused by changes of the CO2 percentage, but by solar activity. 
The temperature curve of the IPCC over the last 1,000 years, which purposefully called forth a bad conscience with many people, has been manipulated. It is the so-called hockey stick curve, which describes the dramatic, unique increase in temperature over the last 100 years. This rapid temperature rise is mostly explained with the industrialization and in this context the increased CO2 emission. This should prove that man is the perpetrator of the global warming. In contrary, earlier well-proven graphics, however, show completely different temperature profiles during the last 1,000 years. These charts register a heat period in the Middle Ages and a cold period in the early modern times. The graphic published by the German Meteorological Science shows that the average temperatures in Germany decreased during the last 15 years until 2012, whereas the CO2 percentage in the atmosphere slightly increased. That contradicts the thesis that temperature rises with the increase of CO2. On September 14, 2014, the Austrian newspaper Kronenzeitung reported ice acceleration at the poles astonishes climate researchers and is global warming taking a break? It is even mentioned that it had been the biggest ice extent around the Antarctic continent for 35 years, which would be a massive problem for the penguins as they need open water for hunting for their prey. In 2009, hackers exposed dialogues of an IPCC sub-office as systematic lies. The hacked material, in the form of emails, was published on the Internet a few hours later and revealed a highly charged matter. It came to light that huge amounts of data were just distorted to be in line with the IPCC. Various high-ranking scientists, such as Professor Richard Tall, physicist and climate researcher Henrik Svensmark, or political scientist Björn Lomborg, were dismissed from the IPCC membership. This happened after Björn Lomborg had written the book Apocalypse No, where he expressed a clear no to the IPCC thesis. Co-founder and main advocate of the IPCC and the global warming is the politician Albert Arnold L. Gore. He was U.S. Vice President under Bill Clinton from 1993 till 2001. El Gore predicted a sea level rise of 6 to 7 meters in 5 to 10 years. In the movie an inconvenient truth, he shows how entire countries will be flooded and that there will be millions of climate refugees during the next years. Horror pictures are shown of flooded cities and continents. Meanwhile, he earns billions of dollars with taxes and payments that have to be paid because of the alleged climate catastrophe. In 2010, the German magazine Depeche already asked the ironic big question, who becomes the first CO2 billionaire in the world? What is unthinkable in other professions due to inhibitation seems to be no problem in politics and commerce. Dear audience, the subject climate change is obviously considerably more complex than the IPCC wants the world population to believe. Taking a closer look, it is apparently worth the question qui bono, in English, who benefits from it. Supplementary to this subject, we also recommend two speeches of the anti-censorship coalition. First, climate change, certainty or political intrigues from Dr. Helmut Böttiger, and secondly, the birth of the climate lie of Helmut Bachmann. You find them at www dot anti minus sensor dot info they're in German if you understand German please take time to listen in any way inform the people around you about these correlations with this in mind have a pleasant evening goodbye